Hi folks, this is God of Radio Moscow here again for you with another beer review. My choice for this one is the Brewdog Punk IPA. Now, this is one of the five uh, core range beers produced by Brewdog. And Brewdog are a very, very interesting company to talk about because they really have put Scottish beer on the map. I mean, there's several really good craft breweries in Scotland, but the main export one is still the, the piss water that is tenants. But um, there's several, there's several really good craft breweries in Aberdeenshire. In addition to, uh, to Brewdog, you have Six Degrees North. We haven't, we unfortunately haven't started producing bottles yet, but I'm sure that that happens pretty soon. But in Scotland, you also have the Orkney Brewery, Cairn Gorms, Williams Brothers, who I also did a review on uh, not too long ago. Uh, but Brewdog are the ones who really seem to put Scottish beer on the map. And they're a very interesting company. They only started back in 2007 and they were founded by James Watt and Martin Dickey, who owned a brewery in the Kesset Industrial Estate in Fraserville, which is a very you know, small fishing town, I believe, in the northeast of Scotland. But in 2012, they moved to the new brewing facility in Ellen, which is near, is closer to the city of Aberdeen, and the Fraserville facility remains uh, as a beer lab. And they put, I believe they also produce the very, you know, a high percentage stuff there as well, but they produce a lot of their experimental stuff there uh, before introducing it into the bars and stuff like that. Uh, but they claim to be Scotland's largest independently owned brewery and they produce about 120,000 bottles per month and they export these all across the world. Uh, you're talking about Taiwan, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, North America, the US and Canada. Uh, and all over Europe, you can get them in countries like Estonia. I've seen some of these beers in Estonia. But uh, I mean, they have just the growth has just been it's been exponential. It's been incredible how how quickly this company has grown in 2007 and how well known these beers have become in only six years uh, of existence so far. But uh, in addition to their core range, they also produce some what they of what they call occasional brews. Which you know they include pilsners, stouts. You get ones that are infused with uh, random fruits, random. You, know, you get heather beers from random fruits. You get a whole host of stuff. So Brewdog are a very, very interesting company. By self-admission, the idea is just to produce the most ridiculous beers they can think of, and they do it pretty damn well. I mean, there's some stuff that you would hear that they produce and you think, oh no, that would be horrible, but. And you taste it and then you know, it speaks for itself. And they're a really incredibly, they're an incredible brewing company who it just seems to have, have worked for them. But they're particularly well known for their for producing the really the really, really high percentage alcohol beers. And they've actually held the title of world's strongest beer on more than one occasion. The strongest beers have been the 32% tactical nuclear penguin, which I believe uh, was brewed first in 2009, but you can still get it today. Uh, they have the 41% Sink the Bismarck, and then the most recent one was the 55% at the end of history, and this was packaged with stoats and squirrels, which uh, raised concern from the you know animal lovers and things like that. But um, these brews, these beers have been largely produced because of the ongoing very competitive pissing contest, if you like, with Schorschbrau in Germany, which they and they are very determined to keep this title of world's strongest beer. They've just produced one which I believe is called Schorschbrau 57, and that currently holds the title of world's strongest beer. But in addition to all these interesting uh, beers that they produce, they also own a number of bars throughout the, the different countries, throughout Scotland, and I believe they're expanding into Europe as well. In 2010, the first bar opened in Aberdeen, and in 2011, this was uh, followed by ones <coughs> in Edinburgh and Glasgow. And in 2012, they expanded into England, including Bristol, Newcastle, Birmingham, and I believe it was also Nottingham as well. But uh, as a, with Brugal beers, it's very typical for them to put a, a blurb on the label at the back here. So one of the traditions I wanted to make with my Brugal reviews is that I read the blurb here. Uh, so I'll just get going with that. Uh, this beer is back order beer. Beer like it used to be. Beer like it should be. Beer like it will be. Welcome to the post-punk apocalyptic mother of an India paleo. A beer that has spent its formative years blitzkrieg boffing around India and the, quint and the subcontinent. Quintessential empire with an anarchic twist. God save the queen and all who sail in her. 
raising a stiff little finger to IPAs that have, have come before and those that is yet to meet. Turn up the volume, pay the man, and embrace the pumped up, pimped, out, pimped up, outlaw, outreach. Never elite, never mind the bollocks. This is the real deal. You can tell I'm a little tired with my reading skills there. But uh, I'll make a tradition of these in the, my upcoming Brewdog uh, videos to read the, blog, the blurbs of these two because they are, some of them are actually pretty funny. The whole idea with Brewdog is they have this marketing campaign that's all about uh, beer, they call it beer for punks, and it stems particularly from this beer, so this is a very good one to do my first Brewdog review on, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, just to let you have a little look at the bottle here. It's very distinctive. Um, if you're watching this video in different countries, this will be probably the one that's most easy for you to get. The bottle cap is very distinctive. It is the typical white with the blue blue dog dog on it. Uh, but we'll get this guy out and have a little have a little taste of it. As you can see, it's a very it's a very nice. Amber colour actually. I was thinking it was, this one would be a kind of pale strawberry colour, but as you can see it's a very nice, a very, very nice amber colour there. There's not a lot of carbonation in this one, it's got a nice kind of frothy white head to it. So you can get a sense of the aroma of this one. It's that old fuse, yeah. It's very, very fruity, very citrusy hops that kind of seem to dominate the aroma. There's a little bit of uh, tininess in there. I'd say there's a little, just a very kind of light hint of, of some malt, I would say. It's definitely, the, the, the fruity smell of this is really very, 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 very strong. Citrus, citrusy hops are definitely, maybe, I would maybe even go as far as to say that the, the fruitiness smell is a little bit, uh, a little bit spicy. Um, Let's give it a taste. It's, there's a little bit of tang to this one actually. It's very, quite, it, it's very nice. I mean, there's a little, the fruity hops I think dominate with this. Um, there's a light bitterness to it. I would say that the malts are a lot more noticeable in the beer, in the taste of it rather than in the aroma. It's a very, very well mixed beer. It's got a very nice the flavour on it, I would say, is very, very kind of balanced. The citrusy hops are the dominant thing in it. It has a light bit of, um, a light bitterness in it. Um, it's, the malt is a bit, it's a lot more prominent, I would say, than the aroma would have you believe. Uh, the mouthfeel has a, has a bit of a, like I say, has a bit of a tang to it. Um, Quite, yeah, it's quite tangy. Like I say, it's quite tangy on the tongue. Um, it's a very, very drinkable beer, I would say. Um, it's one that you know you can sit. It's a very, very nice beer. You can just sit and drink this. I could sit and drink this all night, I would say. Um, it really, I would say that in, in terms of comparing it to other IPAs. In ter the other one I've reviewed is the Sierra Nevada IPA. This one isn't quite as as bitter as that, but compared to a lot of um, other IPAs that I've tried, this one has a bit more of a fruity tang to it. Like I say, that kind of fruity tang is very very prominent in this in this uh, particular beer. In my opinion, in terms of the food dog beers that I've tried, this one is. It's by no means the best Brewdog one, but it's a very, very good one if you've never tried any other of the Brewdog range. It's a very, very good one to start with. Uh, it's the one that, like I say, with it being the Punk IPA, this is the one that started the whole marketing story. If you've never tried Brewdog before and want to get into it, go for the Punk IPA. That would be my thing. This is the staple of the, uh, of the Brewdog range. Go for this one. It's by no means the best Brewdog beer. There are other ones which are incredible. This is a very, very nice beer and it sells very, very well. And when you taste it, you'll see why. But if you want to get into Brewdog beer, Punk IPA is your one to go for. Uh, I have 
uh, I have several um, brew dog beers that I will review for for you at uh, a later stage. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this brew dog review. This one's been a bit of a longer video compared to my previous one because I really like talking about the brew dog company. But uh, thanks for watching again. Give this beer a try, and I'll be back soon with a uh, with more brew dog videos for you. Uh, be sure to like the channel, subscribe, and comment. Let me know your thoughts on the beer if you want me to add anything to the video. But thanks for watching again, and I'll be I will actually go away to Germany tomorrow, so hopefully I'll have some. My next reviews will probably be some random unheard of German beers, but uh, I shall be back soon, and uh, there'll be more brutal reviews to come. Quite a few, I'm sure. But thanks for watching again. Cheers.